Hello there, friends and enemies. Borderlands 3 is a game that hinges on the themes of family, betrayal, and loss. It is also the debut game of some of the most, in my opinion, interesting enemies of the game series, the Calypso Twins. An issue that I have, as I feel many fans of the Borderlands series have expressed about Borderlands 3, is that the writing in Borderlands 3 really didn't feel like it was all the way there. Some plot points did not fully get discovered, and other plot points just kind of seemed to fizzle out along the way. That being said, there's one plot point specifically that I focus on a lot when it comes to Borderlands 3, and it has me asking the question, why didn't Troy betray Tyrene? But I'm not a follower like you. I'm a god. Very quickly before we get into this video, I feel like this is obvious, but I'm going to say this video contains spoilers for Borderlands 3. If you don't want that, feel free to leave. Troy and Tyrene Calypso were born conjoined twins, and because Tyrene is a siren, Troy, by virtue of being conjoined to her, also gained some sort of siren power. Specifically, he gained a, I guess, weaker version of Tyrene's power, the Leech. The game does not expand on how Troy's power exactly is supposed to work. It is just expressed that Troy and Tyrene both think that he can only use his powers on Tyrene to leech off of her life force. Or I guess to leech off of the life force that she leeches off of others to make sure that he can stay alive. And because of that, in his family, Troy was kind of just seen like a freak and, by Tyrene specifically, a parasite. He's just a parasite. Literally, when we were born, our father had to cut him off me. Borderlands 3 starts off by dubbing Troy and Tyrene the Twin Gods, having a cult of psychos and bandits following them called the Children of the Vault. However, it's very clear early on in the game that Tyrene kind of puts herself in the spotlight of this, and Troy kind of gets swept under the bus a lot. Tyrene very obviously sees Troy as a type of burden, although she does also still see him as kind of a tool to be used. You get your first real glimpse at the dysfunction of their dynamic after you beat the Rampager. Keep this up and I'll be a god for real! Uh, we'll be gods. That's what I said. Now, let me do my thing. You get the sense that Troy kind of has to consistently nudge Tyrene to remind her that he's actually part of the duo. And as the game goes on, you can see that Troy and Tyrene kind of have a little bit of banter together, but especially after Troy leeches Maya's life force and powers from her, you see it a little more succinctly. It starts off in little bits in their dialogue as you're playing, but it really comes to a head when you meet Troy in Jacob's Manor, and he says this. We haven't really had a chance to get to know each other, huh? And Ty's been doing most of the talking. She does that, right? She's the center of the galaxy, and the rest of us just sort of orbit around her. Troy is very obviously tired of Tyrene always taking the spotlight, and now that he has a newfound power, he thinks that he has an equal say in this partnership, I should say. From this point on, very slowly here on out, you start to see Troy and Tyrene's relationship crumble just a little bit. That bitch is ice cold. She tried to kill her own brother, can you imagine? <laughs> We're getting close to the Great Vault. I feel like it's fair to say that you can see tiny little nuggets of it in uh, missions like Capture the Frag, but you especially see it later on in the game, especially when you return to Pandora, and uh, after you find out that Elpis is the Vault Key, you start seeing Troy kind of attempt to take charge. Well, just wanted to let you know that we're working on it. I've got a big surprise for you. Huge reveal. Gotta love it. Troy, come on, we talked about this. And given that we've seen this game deal with themes of betrayal in uh, Katagawa betraying his entire family and Zero betraying Reese, you'd think that the natural progression of the storyline is that Troy would betray Tyreen. Maybe Troy would attempt to steal the process of leeching the Destroyer from Tyreen and then perhaps you might have to join forces with Tyreen to stop him, or something like that. Or you could take it an interesting step further, and even say that Troy just leeches Tyreen's power off of her for good. And I think a big indicator that this... 
or at least something in the vein of this was probably going to happen, comes in Tyrene's voice lines that she has during Troy's battle. Stop! You're gonna kill me! The only issue is that once you defeat Troy, instead of something big and grand happening, Troy just dies. Troy dies with Tyreen not mentioning at all the way that he was acting towards her during the end. Not really showing remorse towards her actions towards him that might have led him to getting to the point and mindset that he was in. The battle with Troy kind of just ends his storyline almost completely. After this point, you barely hear him talked about at all. On occasion, you'll pick up an echo log that has maybe a little bit of backstory for Troy and Tyreen, and you get the smallest nugget of information about Troy from Typhon DeLeon, but other than that, you don't. Troy is almost never mentioned again after this point, and it really feels like there's no impact to the circumstances surrounding Troy's life and him gaining power and combating those circumstances. I guess you could say that before Elpis is revealed to be the Vault Key, and before the Troy fight, you kind of feel like, okay, this is gonna go somewhere. And then once the Troy fight ends, that's it. There's no payoff for the buildup that the entire game has had up until this point. And there's been a lot of buildup. You've gone to four planets if you include Pandora. After Troy's boss fight, it kind of feels like, and just a reminder that this is speculative in my own opinion, that the Borderlands 3 writing team just wanted to make Borderlands 2 again, if that makes sense. It kind of feels like the way the story flows after Troy's death just kind of flows similarly to the end of Borderlands 2. And I feel like this really contributes to the reason that Borderlands 3 is regarded as a worse game than Borderlands 2 because the story beats are there, they're very obviously present, and they don't resolve. Personally thinking, I think that Troy Calypso and the way that he feels about not only his sister but also himself and his entire family is really interesting, and I feel like if that had been touched on a little bit more rather than just kind of making him the mini boss leading up to the final boss, it would have been great. But ultimately, it really feels like Troy was mishandled. It feels like they understood that going into this, Troy would be kind of like the underdog? Like he gets power, he finally believes that he can do something, that he can be as powerful as his sister, and then he just dies? I mean, yes, Tyreen says that he could kill her, but it doesn't really feel like there's any stakes of her dying here. And what would have happened if he did leech her life for us and she died? What would have happened? I guess we'll never know. Borderlands 3's writing can't be undone. So what was the point of this video? What, what am I trying to say here? I am a big fan of the Borderlands series. It feels like such a big stretch from Borderlands 2 where the plot holes in the writing could be chalked up to just the main villain being overconfident and moving over to Borderlands 3 where the plot holes in the writing are just chalked up to the writers couldn't figure out where to go. When you're coming up with a plot line or you see that a plot line is very clearly building up, not giving that plot line resolve doesn't make the game feel satisfying and it doesn't make the game feel good. It kind of just feels flat. It makes the game feel like a worse experience because of it. Personally speaking, I feel like if Troy had betrayed Tyreen, it would have made Maya's death not feel as worthless as it was. Regardless of how you feel about Maya's death, I, I think that if Troy had used Maya's powers for more and had actually betrayed his sister like the game seemed to have been building up to, it probably would have made Maya's death feel a little bit better? The point being, you're taking something that occurred because of something that fans already didn't like, and you're making it worse by giving it no payoff at all. You might as well just tell people that Maya, one of the Vault Hunters from Borderlands 2, wasn't actually as strong as she proclaimed to be in Borderlands 2. And you could chalk this up to Troy not 
knowing how to use Maya's powers, but he was using them flawlessly throughout the game, from my perspective at least. He was anointing bandits. He was turning them into Iridian creatures. That's crazy. At the end of the day, if you have that plot line, you feel like it's tugging at you, do it. Do it. The game will probably be better for it. That's all I have to say for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found something to enjoy about this video. I apologize if this video was kind of nonsensical. Um, this is something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and I kind of just wanted to talk about it. Thank you once again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and until next time, drink your water.